slices of oh, oh, chill, chill. She's mad at me because she's like, you better not start talking on that phone. Okay, I do not have a tripod. I have to use my teeth here. Okay, <clears throat> I don't have a tri. I'm waiting for a tripod. I ordered a new tripod. And I am going to cook Molly some veggies. I am actually going to cook up some veggies for Molly. This is how I am slimming her down. This is how I'm slimming me down. She does, I said that we didn't have meat in the house anymore, but that is not correct because Molly does get meat. Molly gets, I'll show you. This is the best thing for dogs. Actually, don't take my advice. I'm just saying for me, um, I go to the butcher. There's a little local market here and I go to the butcher and I get this. I get five pounds of, I don't wanna to touch it because then I have to wash my hand. Anyway, I get five pounds of turkey neck and I have it chopped up in one inch pieces. And I give her that raw, and that is really good for her. Right, Mal? Mal's like, you better be cooking, lady. You better be cooking. If you have time to talk, you have time to cook. And then <clears throat> I do vegetables. And sometimes I do certain fruits. And I stuff her vegetables. I like to, she likes them a little bit grilled. And I stuff them in her Kong. So, oh, she's a greedy little thing. She really is. She's greedy. Okay, these are going to take a minute. These are going to take a minute. Oh my God. God, she's so rude. Lord. And I also give her, because sometimes little dogs have anal gland problems. Okay, I don't mean to be gross, but if you have a little dog, you know. So this is no scoot. Now, I used to buy the veterinary veterinarian brand boot the scoop on Amazon and it was like for what is this how many pieces um 120 pieces it was I think like 55 dollars this one is like 21 24 dollars so let me get her one I can't do this also I want to show you my kitchen this is my kitchen now I redid my kitchen I'm not going to do the full tour Number one, um, I have a kid in the living room watching um, a documentary, so I'm not going to disturb them. Number two, it's not like a sunny, lovely day yet. I want to wait till I'm really clean the house and the day's sunny, then I'll show you the tour. But I'm going to show you, this is pretty much a clean kitchen. But this is what I did. I found this paint. Stop, Molly. You're acting crazy. We just went for a super long walk. We went all the way to town because I wanted to get some good mascara and they didn't have it. So then we stopped at a thrift store. No, stop. Oh, okay, hold on. I had to put her out. I didn't. I had to put her out. She, it's like ridiculous. We just came home from like a three mile walk and <clears throat> one of my kids and Molly and I went to the store and back and it's like, I don't know, it's a long walk. And we stopped at the thrift store. So she's had a full day. So, and she's not starving, but she acts like she's like so obsessed with food. <sighs> so am I. Anyway, I found this on the street. I found a little can of this and I did an accent wall and I loved it. Cause you remember, if you remember, I don't have old videos up. So I don't know what to tell you, but it, this all, this whole kitchen was like washed out pale yellow. Anyway, so I did this. And then there was a tiny can of this wonderful color and I did this backdrop or backsplash and I fell madly in love with it and then it just took off. I just started painting every room. So the rest of the kitchen I did in this kind of Tuscan yellow and I pulled the table out because I just, I cook so much in my kitchen and I'm cooking from scratch and I'm making my pizza doughs and my bread and I just felt like I never had room and I wanted to open up the space and really make it a really working kitchen. And I did, and I love being in here. I'm cooking up a storm, I'm saving tons of money, it's saving on our health, it's wonderful. 
Anyway, <clears throat> this is how I did it. And I'll kind of show my office is a little bit of a mess. It's also the dining room now. So this is it. These don't really go with the kitchen anymore, but um, yeah, I wish I had left them natural. Sometimes I move too fast and then I regret it because these used to be kind of a, like a brown wood. I kind of wish that was. And I would also say that I'm not a fan of chalk paint anymore. I did chalk paint for this and my table and I do not like how it's worn out and I keep having to repaint these and I put sealing sealant on them. I paint, I wash them, repaint them, put sealant and they still, I just don't like it. It's like they stain easily, weird colors show through, they look, they scratch up. I'm not crazy about it. I am not a fan of the chalk paint anymore. But too late, I had watched this video of this woman who was always cleaning and doing work on her house and she chalk painted like all her furniture. And I was inspired so I started chalk painting everything and <laughs> it, I'll show you my table. Like I have painted my table over and over and it just doesn't work out. Anyway, we're gonna leave this. I'm debating whether I should have coffee. Also, I wanna show you, I have this I have this little espresso maker I found free on the street. It was boxed up, brand new, free. And it came with a frother. I got this, I don't know, like two years ago. But I bought these. These are reusable espresso cups. But they come with, I don't have any more. I can't use them right now because, well, I don't have any to show you. But you buy these little packets of the little covers that seal on the top. And that's all you have to do, and they're disposable. And so that's wonderful. It saves a fortune on those little K cups. And then you're also reducing your garbage. Plus, I saved the grounds for my compost. So, yay! Oh, look, there's Molly. Where is she going? She's running around the front. Oh, look, she's running around the front. She's going to start barking at me over there. Also, I've been finding wonderful clothes. There were some, some, there were some people who were moving and they had all their stuff just piled on the street and I went through it and I found like this wonderful top. Look at that. And it's nice and long. I can wear it with stretch pants. And then this blouse, look at that, free. This top, free, huh? This is a nice top too. This, and these are large. They fit me. <clears throat> they fit me really well. And then this top. And a lot of these tops are large, so they fit me. And they're long, so they go with my stretch pants. And this top. And this lovely top. Look at that. Look at that. Um, This sweater. I don't know if I'm going to keep. This one's kind of small and weird. And then there's this one. I don't know if I'm going to keep those. I might donate them. And then, did I get this one? I, I found this free, too. This nice dress. I found a lot of stuff. Let's see. This kind of sparkly, weird sweater. It's got sparkles in it. You can't see. Can you see? I've been finding a lot of stuff for free and also springtime is here. So we're all, all of the neighbors, including myself, are starting to go through another cleaning and purging. And so I put tons of things on the street free and the neighbors put tons of things free on the street. There's a, and then there's a sweater. Um, anyway, this is kind of like a yoga sweater. I love it. And then I did buy this. This is a Marvel. Because I am such an Avenger Marvel person. Um, oh, and then this t-shirt. Positive thinking evokes more energy. True. I found that. No, I didn't find that. I bought that. I bought this. So I got a lot. I mean, I'm not going to go through all of it. But I keep finding free stuff on the street. And it's fabulous. Actually, the winter was kind of slow. But I don't need that much either. A little weird sweater. Then the other thing that happened was 
the prepper, there was a prepper who decided to get rid of all his stuff. He, he, he said he was in recovery and, uh, he was getting rid of all of his stuff. And so his stuff literally filled up the whole back of our truck and the back seat. We kept the vegetarian stuff and I donated like 11 full packed full to the brim bags to the food bank, which was wonderful. It was my way of saying thank you because we've had to rely on the food bank for a few months, but not anymore. We don't, we don't anymore because it just gets with the plant-based lifestyle. It's a lot cheaper. And I've been stocking up on like huge bags of flour and that kind of thing. And then so there, I didn't keep everything. I just, and actually I'm going to donate some more stuff, but my kids love the Progresso and I love to heat this up and put it in their thermos. Mostly they love homemade soup because I make everything from homemade scratch. And so when you do, then canned food and packaged food doesn't taste the same, but they do like these. I do heat these up sometimes and put them um, in their thermos because they want hot stuff. This is really junky, but Sam loves these. Those I'm gonna donate. The cream mushroom, I love working with cream and mushroom. I make casseroles, all kinds of stuff. Vegetables, these are, I'm not crazy about canned vegetables, but you just throw them in soup. I just throw them in soup to bulk up the soup. Green beans, those are great. You can make green bean casseroles with that and that. I actually love green bean casserole and stuffing. And, Oh, these are falling and sometimes I feed them to Molly. Um, what else we got? Oh, fruit cup. That's gross. I saved the pineapple. I love putting that on pizza. I don't like the other stuff. Sam wanted to try this, but I know he's not going to like it. I don't like canned fruit, canned corn. And then there was all this tea. So lemonade, tea, sun tea, dark tea, powdered milk, which you can always use. Um, I did save some tuna. This was not expired at all. There's actually two more years on it. And then salt. Oh my goodness. There's enough salt. I will not have to buy salt for the next decade. And then there's top ramen, but I'm going to be honest. I think I'm going to get rid of it because the kids keep eating it. And I just think it is so junky and gross. It is not, there is no nutrition in it. I mean, you can throw some spinach and stuff, but I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Um, there's a seizing and then all these Mylar bags, see there and there, these are like quinoa, oats, black beans, pintos, red beans, brown rice, white rice. That is what we use. We use all those. Now over here, I had some empty shelves and there's more Mylar bags. Okay. And then there's a lot of things like, um, a lot of tomato sauce, which I use for pizza sauce and spaghetti sauce and more vegetables and honey and some condiments and some canned beans. Cause you know, you can never enough have, have enough beans and some salsa, which I think is probably going to be gross, but you can make it in a sauce and then there's enchilada sauce. So that's what we kept. And I do have a couple huge bags in the pantry of rice and beans. So that's all we kept and we gave everything else away. But that I have been working from the pantries and it has made all the difference. So this is another thing we got for free. Oh, and see, I painted this room. Um, it was an ocean blue and I guess I was thinking it was going to be more a tropical, you know, really fun tropical blue. But... It was like a deep dive dark blue, but that's okay. So this room got painted this color. Um, and then we got this for free. Someone was giving it away for free. And it was not that hard to haul over here. And it fits right in the corner. And we've got all our free weights and our ankle weights. And I use this machine every other day. I do the arms and the legs. I absolutely love this machine. Okay, this is how Molly likes her. She likes it a little grilled. And we're going to stuff it in our Kong. Right? Are you happy? Also, I love these apples.
apples, but they are not organic. These are some of my favorite apples. They're so crunchy. They are not organic. We tried to do mostly organic, but I just, I do some vinegar and water and soak them. But just so you know, I mean, you can, vinegar and water will clean things pretty well, but fruit, I used to live on a fruit, fruit farm and they spray from the time there are blossoms to the time of harvest. So there's always pesticide. It grows with pesticide. So there's only so much you can wash off of it. You upset? You upset? You working it? It'll cool down. It'll cool down. It'll cool down. It's okay that it's hot. It gives her something to do. She needs, she is a feisty little thing and she needs lots of challenges. And she's got one right there, right there. She's like, you better cool down. You better cool down. I got these cute little slippers too. But I can see why they're at the thrift store because when you walk, they pop off your feet. Like that. And then you're always like this. And look at her, she's full of veggies too. She's got a little kibble and veggies stuffed in there. And me, I set up a nice little, oh, we had all these odd and ends, chips and guacamole and salsa and stuff. And I set everything up because dad and one child's at the park and the other one's watching a documentary about 9-11. What's that documentary called? Yeah, Fahrenheit 9-11 by Michael Moore. It's really depressing when you start to learn. This is why I don't do news or anything because it's just so, I focus on things like this. <laughs> I focus on my musicals and happy places and Technicolor things and I stare out the window um, because I just can't handle it. I cannot handle the things that have happened and are happening, I just am like, when are we going to get smart? When are we going to wise up? But see, let's not go there. Let's not go there. We got TVs going everywhere. TV in there, a TV in there. So my office is now an office slash dining room. <sighs> I've been reading over, today is the day after I posted my very first video <clears throat> hold on let me close the song is if you don't have a dream and you don't have a dream how you gonna make your dreams come true it's true you don't have a dream how you can make your dreams come true common sense there anyway today is the day it's an overcast day I'm going to give you like a house tour and a garden tour in a few days when it's all warm and toasty roasty. <sighs> Maybe it'll be on here. I'm going to make long videos. I'm going to only post once a week, but I'm going to make super long videos. So it's painful for everyone involved. <laughs> I know you guys love long videos. This is the age of TikTok and shorts. But you guys love the long videos. Hold on. I got to get some color. Oh, wow. There is color. But see, I look pale. I'm not this pale. You saw me in the first video. I have a lot of color. But it's gray out there. Anyway, I want to show you this book. This book is hilarious. My friend, <clears throat> they talk about my books all the time who passed away. I used to call her Miss B. I gave her a new name in the book that I just published, A Feast of Life. I renamed her because one of you is named Miss B. So I'm like, well, you can't have two Miss B's. Anyway, sorry, I gotta make sure I don't have chips. Anyway, she and I used to laugh about this book and I found it at the thrift store today. A man, a can, a plan. And it's got those <laughs> like cardboard pages. Oh my goodness, I love this book. It is so fun. 
I love it. I'm going to, I'm going to go over it. I just love it. And you know, I have all those canned foods now, but I don't have that many. He had a lot of meat stuff and I just sent all that to the food bank. Anyway, I'm not going to talk long, but I've been going over, this is the day after I posted my first video back and I am overwhelmed by the love and support and um, patience. And I honestly, I really don't know. I don't see myself how everybody sees me. Like everybody's like, you're fresh, a breath of air and um, a breath of fresh air. Did I say a fresh, a breath of air? God. Oh my goodness. Anyway, a breath of fresh air. And like people were really upset. They were like, I panicked, I freaked out. I didn't know what happened. You disappeared. And I really felt like, oh, I can just delete my stuff and kind of go off into the wilderness and disappear. Nobody will care. Nobody will even notice. Because I was watching all these other YouTubers. There's been a huge wave of YouTubers leaving YouTube. But it's a lot of like really big, huge channels and they're just burnt out. Um, but when they leave, people are like, hey, you know, thanks for the years and good luck to you and bravo, go onward, you know. So I was like, but you guys are not the same. All of you are like, where the hell did you go? We were freaked out. Because, you know, the weird thing is, it's like it's a virtual community. You know, we all cut like you guys see me and my family and my home, but I don't I know you by your. Sometimes your handles, your names, especially your pictures. Like, I'm glad a lot of you don't change your pictures because I, when I see your pictures, your little thumbnails, then I'm like, oh, it's her or him or them or, um, but it's a virtual community and yet it's such a community. I mean, I feel like I have more of a community on here on this channel than in my real, you know, three-dimensional world and I really did feel excited about coming back I felt super excited about coming back I wanted to come back a long time ago but I had to talk to my kids about it and I had to kind of work things out with them where we had boundaries and it's regulated <laughs> Trying to hear if they're anyway. I gotta hurry up. Anyway, there do have there has to be boundaries and schedules so that they don't feel like it's imposing on them, and they feel like mom is there and present. I get it. So anyway, I had to negotiate and talk to them. I mean, I wanted to come back a while ago, but um, I felt it. It's weird. I felt you guys missing me, and sometimes I really craved and wanted to come back, but I'm like, I just need to give myself some more time to get back in the writing and to get stuff done and to be present. And I was trying to do some emotional, spiritual work, you know? But then one day, the day I made the video, I woke up and I was like, I can't take it anymore. I can't, like I miss my people, I miss my community. And you guys were missing me like crazy. And it's like, I could feel it. It's weird. And my friend and I talk about this all the time. You know, we are spiritual beings in a human body having a human experience. But we are connected. We are connected through invisible webs. The matrix. Anyway, I'm going to go because people are home. I'm having some juice, green juice. But we put beets in it. So it's red juice. So I try to drink this in the morning. I drink about halfway. <clears throat> I do water and then I do that. And now we're gonna have our coffee. I'm using this and I try not to get this because it has palm oil, but okay. So we don't get any palm oil. So watch for palm oil. It's, it's very bad. Palm oil is bad. They're destroying forests and displacing orangutans. 
<sighs> got my Christmas mug. <laughs> Even though we're going into spring. Good morning. Remember me and my chapstick. Oh, yeah, yeah. Don't want to get weird with my chapstick. <sighs> we're going to have some coffee together. I'm going to post once a week and I'm going to turn on my, everybody's out there watching morning, morning TV. I really just want music. Like first thing in the morning, I turn on music. That's all I want. I want to open all the curtains, have the light flood into the house and fill it with music. And of course I have become like my mother in some ways, good ways. I inherited my mother's good stuff and I, I acknowledge her for that. She was very into opera. And I never thought the day would come, but um, I'm gonna put on a little background noise. I always, you know me, I always put on background noise because I just feel like when everybody's here and they're watching stuff and then I have a little background noise, I feel like I have privacy and then I feel, um, oh, and then I can talk freely. You know, I mean, I'm not sharing anyone's stuff. I'm not talking about anyone's stuff. I just, when I feel like they're listening, because my kids sometimes like really listen like when i'm on the phone or i'm recording they really listen they want to hear everything which is really sweet they're very into me and they're very into hearing what i'm talking about because i don't really talk when when i'm with my kids they do all the talking so i think they get to know me more when they hear me talking to my friends or through my videos when it's kids it's kid time it's all about them and they're quite chattery they're big chatterboxes oh this coffee tastes so the first cup of morning coffee is like nothing tops it and I usually have an afternoon cup but I think I'm gonna stop I think what I'm gonna do is have an afternoon cup of tea because um, I find that an, another cup of coffee in the evening kind of gives me a little headache. It's too much because I make my coffee very strong. I just need one strong cup to get this engine rolling. But in the afternoon, it's like no. And then sometimes I sleep well and sometimes it backfires and I can't sleep. Um, so I... Oh my goodness, my dining room slash office. I, I had an office, but then I started feeling like, I don't know, it felt kind of greedy. It's like, we don't have the biggest house. According to European standards, we have a very big house. According to American standards, we don't, we have a very small house, which I personally think that everybody, if houses were built smaller and yards and streets and everything, we would use way less nature and habitats. But I'm not gonna get on that. Obviously I woke up this morning, you know, sometimes I wake up and I'm just like, you know, I get on these rants about the world and this is why I can't watch news this is why I do not watch the news I do not get on social media I don't YouTube is my only social media internet outlet at this point and I have to come on there with a roadmap and a plan because if I don't I get you know I start wandering down back alleys and get lost in bad neighborhoods and um, and I have to, for me, at my age, in this time, I have to um, really stay positive. I don't know. I don't do the news. I don't, I barely know what's going on. And it's going to stay that way. I sign petitions. I vote. I, <clears throat> I donate to a few causes, even though, you know, like we have been on a kind of bu tight budget but I have 
a few or I had donated before and then I had gotten rid of all of them because we were on such a tight budget but recently I've been donating to projects again because that makes me feel good and it makes me feel like I'm doing something so I do sign petitions I do donate to projects but they're mostly about animals reforestation children getting people food um, replanting the jungles protecting animals and children these are the things I donate money, time, my services to. And when I can't, you know, I, I donate just little bits of money here and there. And as my wealth grows, I will, my biggest thing is I want to do, donate more and more money to these projects. Because at this point in my life, that's what makes me feel good. And I also donate my time. Like for a long time, we were working at the food bank. With school, that's not happening. But when summer happens, I'll start working at the food bank again. Um, and we do use the food bank a tiny bit. Not much. Not much because we got all that. We got those canned things. Although, like I don't eat those soups and stuff because they're meat and... But sometimes I go for, you know, at the end of a paycheck, I'll go for produce and um, eggs for the kids, even though I don't like them, they're factory eggs. And uh, sometimes they give us a couple bags because we're listed as vegetarian at the food bank. So they'll give us a couple bags of vegetarian stuff. And in there I'll find things like Beyond Burgers or um, vegetarian alternative meats, treats, that kind of thing. But we don't, you know, when we go to the food bank, we don't need the meats or the milks. I do alternative milks. We don't do the sweets and treats. I rarely do the mac and cheese. I don't need any of the pantry sta staples anymore. I don't need any rice or beans anymore. So they, the last time I went, they were kind of like, what the hell do you want? Because <laughs> they don't get it. I'm stocked up in those. I just need a little extra produce and alternative milk sometimes. I know that's kind of silly. But my budget is getting, you know, um, it's just improving. Every month it just gets easier and easier. And with the plant-based diet, with the plant-based eating, uh, it doesn't cost that much. It actually is healthier to eat plant-based. Vegetarian is a little bit easier, but vegetarians are still doing a lot of eggs and dairy. If you go plant-based and you're making most of it yourself, it is so inexpensive. And we do mostly organic. And definitely I try to, I get big bags of um, non-GMO grains, beans, flour. Anyway, so our days at the food bank are dwindling. We're not really needing it anymore. And, and I have returned here, but I am not monetized yet. So enjoy those non-commercial, those commercial free videos while you can. And I'd like to post once a week. I just don't know what day. Maybe you guys could suggest what day. I think in the morning, maybe Thursday. I think in Thursdays in the morning. That's probably when this one will come out. Anyway, I want to say I have just posted... When I'm making this right now, I just posted my video a couple days ago. And the love and support that has poured in, I just can't believe it. I don't know. I guess I just don't see myself how other people see me. And one person asked why I didn't say anything. And I'm really sorry. First, I want to say I'm really sorry to just disappear. I really am because it really upsets some people. And... I guess because I had done a goodbye video months and months ago. Remember when I said goodbye? 
my beloved community because I really wanted to just leave for a while because I hadn't written in, an, in a year and a half. I hadn't written anything in a year and a half. And I felt like um, I was neglecting things. I really did. And I felt like I needed to just kind of go off. It wasn't anything negative or bad. I just felt like I needed to go off into the wilderness and go in monk mode for a little bit and get back into my writing and my reading and focus on the kids and their schoolwork. My eldest is pretty much doing their own thing, but my youngest, I'm still half homeschooling and he was a little bit behind. So I just felt like it's just time to do monk mode for a little bit, just disappear. And um, I made a video, but there were so many people that pulled on me to come back. And so I came back because I really, really care about all of you. I really feel connected, even though this is a virtual world and we're a virtual community. I mean, you see me, but I, can't, I only see you by your thumbnails and, and your words. But I have gotten to know you through your words and your shares and your little thumbnails and I do, when I see your little pictures, I get excited. I'm glad some of you have not changed your pictures because I get excited. I've seen your pictures and heard your words for years, years. And um, and I forgot what I was gonna say, but I did, oh man, I missed you, I really did. And then, And so when you call out to me or when people miss me and think about me, I feel it. I know that sounds cuckoo, but we are all connected in a web. We're connected in like a matrix, an invisible spiritual web matrix. So when we form a community, we are connected to each other. We are drawn to each other. So I feel it. And there are times when I'll be out in the garden and I'll just feel like I need to get back. Or I wake up, like when I posted the first video, I woke up that morning and I just felt this overwhelming, like you have to go back. So I did a goodbye video and then I felt really pulled to come back and people were finding me on various Goodreads and stuff. And, and so I came back, but I wasn't ready. And then I, I came back and I was having fun and, and I made some money to pay off some debts, which was great. And, and, um, I did have fun with it. I always have fun with it. But inside I was like, I need, I still need to take this time. I need some time to work some stuff out. So that's why I just, um, I just kind of disappeared. I deleted the videos for privacy reasons. I really feel strongly that in this day and age, with the stuff that's going on in the internet. And I've been seeing a lot of other YouTubers with family and children talk about this. I don't feel like it's safe to have kids on the internet anymore. I don't. I strongly feel like it's not a good idea to have our kids on the internet, to film them, to do anything. And um, I did talk about, I have a blog and I talked about one of my children a little bit because it's just, natural for me to want to share everything but i got rid of that because i'm like it it's no it's i'm not going to do it anymore so i got rid of all those videos because number one my children were like in every video and i didn't i don't want them up there on the internet anymore and number two i feel like i have shifted and changed so much that all the things i talked about and shared in the past is not even me anymore. It's just not me. And I am partially, partially I do regret deleting all the videos. I kept some, I do have some that I'm gonna keep and I treasure because they have my kids and they're kind of fond memories and they're of us in the old cottage or when we first moved up here, but I don't wanna put those up. I wanna just start fresh from here and move forward because I have changed and evolved so much over time that I just want a clean start. And um, so privacy and a fresh start is what we're going for. And 
and I I disappeared because I just wanted I just needed that time and everybody was super respectful and gave me the space and I was gone for about four months and it was the most productive positive growth promoting time I mean I really bonded with my kids I helped uh, my youngest really catch up in school. He's like thriving and he's caught up. I repainted almost every room in the house. I'm not done yet. I still have a lot of painting to do. I did a lot of inner work. I had a lot of quiet downtime. It was hard for me, but I did it. And I got back into my writing fully, fully back into my writing. I mean, I am reading my writing. I've got a million writing books. I've been reading how to write a movie in 21 days and 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 this one shut up and write the book which this one is really good and I love this book the war of art I mean I have all kinds of other ones uh, Natalie Goldberg I found her um, I'll talk about her later I just, I, so I got really back into my reading and studying my writing craft and I got back into writing. The first two months of the year I wrote and edited myself. I know that's not the best, but it's, I cannot afford an editor right now. As a matter of fact, my eldest is helping me edit because my eldest is a brainiac. So they get paid to help me. Um... So between my eldest and I, we edit and proofread to the best of our ability. <laughs> Plus in homeschooling, I'm having to go through English grammar again and composition. So I'm actually relearning how to do proper English grammar composition. And it's wonderful. It's helping. Um, so I wrote two books, A Feast of Life and a fictional book. Promise the Moon, and I've had great reviews on both. So, and now I'm deep into my second fictional book. I'm about almost 20,000 words, and I'm doing April, Camp April, NaNoWriMo, and so I'm really, really into it. Um, writing fiction is not easy. Like, you really need the time and the space, and you can't be distracted. Like, you have to really focus because you have to really get to know your characters and what's their journey and what's their, what are their issues and why, and like you have to become your character. So that, what else? And I just worked hard on my house, on my family, my cooking. I went back to making bread by hand instead of the machine. I wrote two books. I started a third one. So it was time that was needed and productive and positive. And then one day, and then I started missing. I really wanted to come back actually a while ago, but I thought, give yourself time, just give yourself time. And then I had to respect my kids' wishes. But the other day I woke up and it was like, it's time. And my kids were in agreement. We had a big talk and they were in agreement. Um, but I just have to pace myself and not let it because I do actually love to do it so much that I start recording all the time and, you know, throwing videos out there every day and, but, and that maybe one day that that'll be, I can do that, you know, as the kids get older and they start, you know, running off with their friends and busy and don't have time for mummy, then I'll, I'll have all the time to do that. But right now it's all about my family and I have to choose their first, writing second. And then this is, you know, this is a very fun, joyful thing for me, but this has to be third. This is, this is mummy's hobby. Oh, and Molly. Mo Molly's in there with the kids. So that's just what I wanted to share this morning. You know, that it was a wonderful time. I think it's important for all of us to sometimes unplug. Um, 
the internet does have good things and it does connect us worldwide and it's helping making wonderful changes and making people aware. It's also filled with a lot of junk and untruths. And so we have to be very intelligent when we navigate and we can't just hear something go, what I heard. We have to look at all sides, investigate, research, use our brains, use our hearts, not believe everything, especially when it comes from the news. You know, Bali was watching, he loves to watch the travel vlogs. And he was watching this one travel vlog where they went into China. Now we're all brainwashed to think, you know, China's this, China's that, Chinese people are this, and I don't care for their government too much. I feel for the people. Um, but we think we have this misconception misconception of what it's like over there well we watched this travel vlog and it was beautiful the cities were so clean and beautiful and loaded with tree-lined streets and and the people were so nice and so generous and so as these people are traveling to other countries we're seeing wow the news only shows us one side but there's actually a very other different other side to these countries. And then, you know, um, my eldest was watching 9-11 by Michael Moore. And man, it makes you think it's like we just listen to the news and we, we get out, you know, we get out our pitchforks and and uh, our, our uh, fire, <laughs> our torches. We get out our torches and pitchforks and we're like, that country's bad and those people are bad. Usually it's only a tiny group that causes trouble, but the rest of the country or the government, there's a few people in the government that are real a-holes, but the rest of the people are beautiful people. And so we have to be very careful because the internet, the social media, the news, can brainwash us and not in a good way. But I just try to stay positive. I think that most important thing is for us to heal ourselves so that we can be a shining light. Like we can share that healing and that light and that love to other people and we can lead by example. And I think it's important for us to love everybody even the ones, especially the ones that are, you know, crazy and aggressive, love them, love them big. And to stay positive, focus on the positive and the joyful thing. There's so much joy and positive and there's so many good things. And I've gotten on sites before and read the comments. And I remember I watched this one video and the comments were just like all these people just thought like doom and gloom and there was someone who made a comment he's like these comments suck <laughs> I thought they do they suck and I got off there so I'm super careful I even have um, I have subscribed to a bunch of really good positive happy channels and I only get on there I don't even get on the news feed I get on my subscription feed and I have, and I feel, I feel like, especially, you know, I, I told all of you, I went, um, the Tibetans came to town, Tibetans came to town, and I did like three or four healings, I don't know, I did like three or four huge group healings, they were intense, and every year I do healings, as a matter of fact, I always have my, my strings, where am I? So let me show you my strings. Oh, yeah, they're, they're wound around my computer. I have my, this is from my first year. I had three of these. I lost them. And then I had green ones from last year, but I wore them so long I had to cut them off my wrist. I couldn't get them off. And then this year we got these beautiful magenta. And um, they, the Dalai Lama prays over these. And then I wore them forever. But, as a 
Matter of fact, I'm going to wear them right now as I'm talking. Maybe I'll share something deep. I always share deep things. Um, but after I had those healings, I felt really open and porous. And I had to be really careful about what I watched, what I read, what I took in. I actually couldn't be in certain situations because I could feel everybody's stuff. I remember walking into a Rayleigh's one time, it was really busy, and I just started feeling, my son turned to me and said, you look depressed. And I was like, I know, I just felt like all of a sudden I felt so overwhelmed, I couldn't handle it. And I put the oat milk back and I left. And then I went to one of our smaller stores and I felt all of a sudden I felt lifted up and happy. So I have changed like where I shop. I go to grocery outlet. I love grocery outlet. I always am happy there and I always have fun there. But I actually found a little tiny health food store that's like often, I mean, it's just kind of nestled in some street. You don't even know it exists, but it's small and peaceful and the people who work there are really sweet. And I have started, that's my side store. That's where I get all my organic and side stuff. And I've started choosing like different places to go, to shop, what I watch, everything to ensure that I just have a safe, peaceful existence. And even when I get online, I'm really careful, really careful. So I think it's important, you know, and I see a lot of people, they're so unhappy. And I really think just get rid of it, get rid of the news, get rid of the social media, get rid of everything. Just whittle it down to like, say, oh, if you love YouTube, that's great. There's tons of great stuff on YouTube, but whittle it down to just have subscriptions to positive, like gardening, booktubers, you know, but real positive channels and just keep to that. Anyway, I'm going to share, not right now, but I'm going to share some channels I found that I absolutely love. take you guys to the store <clears throat> we we're at the park for a long time and then we went to the store and I just completely forgot um this is pretty much what I got I spent about 118 and I got a lot of stuff but <clears throat> what I don't feel good about is I got a lot of package stuff and that's not the norm usually I have um See that little bucket there on the freezer? Usually I buy fresh salad, wash it, chop it up, and fill that bucket with, and it's big, it's a big bucket. And I fill it with uh, romaine and all kinds of lettuce, butter lettuce, romaine, that red lettuce, cabbage, carrots, all kinds of stuff. And then we eat off that. And that is very, it's a great way to save money and it's organic and healthy and clean and local and However, um, I am not in the mood. Like sometimes I cook from scratch like crazy. And then sometimes I am not in the mood at all. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. You don't cook from scratch and don't, don't feel sorry for her. She's had wonderful WALKs and mm -mm, don't even. And she just had a big plate of food. I just gave her some kibble and chews and she, I roasted her vegetables. She had a big plate of veggies and then all her other stuff. But she's just so food driven. And so am I. So is her mommy. So anyway, some of, a lot of this isn't organic. That's the other thing. I'm trying to do mostly organic, fresh. It doesn't always happen. And that's what I'm talking about. Like 
you can't put pressure. Well, I'm not going to talk about you, but I don't put pressure on myself anymore. I do a lot of scratch cooking, organic, whole foods, and then there are times I don't. And I don't think that's what's going to kill us. I just don't. There's a lot of other things out there that'll make us sick, like stress and unhappiness. Also, I wanted to get back on track. I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do like 75, 80% raw. Stop, Molly. I'm going to put you out. And... 25% cooked whole foods. So I got a whole big bag of potatoes. I'm going to bake those. I'm heating up the oven right now. I'm also going to make kikis, a big batch of kiki sauce. I got a bunch of packaged salads. So for a few days, all I have to do is open them up and have big salads. Everyone can have big salads. This is for the kids. Uh, this is impossible. I thought it was going to be different, but it's just a new look. I'm like, I don't need a new look. I need a new flavor. Uh, bananas and cantaloupes and, and jicama and all these wonderful salads. I'm going to eat tons of salad every day. And avocados, and I got them. They need to ripen up. Oh, this is a wonderful dressing, too. When I make my own salad, this is great. Get this at the health food store. Um, two bags of grapefruit, oranges, more bananas, bread and cheese for kids' lunch sandwiches. Oh, what else do I get? Two bags of these apples. I love these apples. They're so big and crunchy. They are not organic. Oh, this was organic. I think this was like the only organic thing I got. Lemons. I'm going to have lemon water. So I do lemon water. Also, let me unplug. I'm charging up my phone. I'm making a big old batch of pinto beans. And then I'm brewing coffee. I always make a big pot and brew it the night before for Bali because he didn't have time to have it percolate and everything. And um, I'm saying um a lot. I don't like that. I used to say um a lot when I recorded. There's some petrified cheese. Okay, what am I looking for? Nothing for you. Nothing for you. No, lots of vegetables in there. So I'm going to make kiki sauce. I'm going to bake a big pan of potatoes. I've already got some rice in there. Right there, some rice, spinach, and all my little almond creamers. I'm going to still have my coffee. Oh, I remember now. I got my tofu. I love this super firm tofu, and I do tofu scrambles. Those are great. Oh, I can do that with spinach tomorrow. All right, so juice. We usually make juice. What we do is we buy a huge box of organic vegetables and fruits, and we juice it all up for, it, I don't know, it probably lasts four days. So we juice it ahead because it's a big production. So that lasts us for a while. And so I'm going to have, so what, what I do in the morning, I'll show you all this, is I have water. Oh, there's my potatoes. I better get my potatoes in. I have water with lemon because that's very cleansing. And then I have my juice and then I have my coffee. All right, we are busy. Okay, I'm washing the apples in vinegar and water. And I'm making the cheese sauce, and it's Kiki's cheese sauce, and you find it either in her book, Plantiful, Kiki Plantifully, or Plantiful Kiki's channel. I don't remember. I bought the book, and I was addicted to the cheese sauce, and I never went beyond that. So I soak the cashews. I, I'm seeing a lot of plant-based channels, and they aren't soaking the cashews or just throwing everything in but i find that soaking the cashews in hot water softens them so, so things are creamier and then i usually mix up all the seasoning get that all ready and i've got the carrots and potatoes cooking back there oh look it's steaming up i steamed up hold on you're all steamed up there you go and I've got the pinto beans going. I've got the brown rice going. And my rice cooker kaputsed on me after many years of service. But that is A-OK -okay because it's one Ring. last, it's one last less 
gadget in my kitchen and it's really easy to cook rice in a pot. Potatoes are done. Oh, look, we gotta clean that. That's looking nasty. Potatoes are done. Rice is almost done. Almost, almost. We got it on low. And beans are a boiling. I'm kind of boiling them hard right now because I'm hungry. I just ate two big apples. I just ate two of these huge apples, but I'm still hungry. What is on there? Oh my goodness. And we got uh, the sauce. Cheese sauce is done too. So I'm excited about that. I'm going to get a jar. Where is a jar? I got all kinds of stuff. This is bags, boxes. I'm going to do some purging. These are box, bags I use for the store. <sighs> I love this cheese sauce like you don't even know. You don't even know. It has changed my life. There is a wonderful cheese sauce in uh, Marcus and Cara's raw book that I want to try too. People say it tastes just like nacho cheese. So we'll try that soon. Also, I want to show you this channel. Eternal Clips. Where is my, there it is. I'm like, where's my little hand? There it is. This is Eternal Clips. This channel has the best music. The best music. I listen to all their stuff when I'm writing. There are a lot of great music channels for those of you who write and need music. These are great channels for eternal clips. Uh, and then there are a lot of like movie soundtrack channels that just play instrumental music. And it's so perfect for when you're in the writing zone and you can pick you know um celtic music or inspiring music or battle music or let's see if they show any of it i'm in my playlist these are my songs if you want to get in my playlist and look at the songs i've got some great i've got like 106 let's see here I'm trying to, I tried to learn how to do um, a screen recording today and my PC just won't do it. So I can't do, I can do screenshots, but I can't do screen recording, but I am going to try to figure that out if I get that phone and see if I can start getting a little bit fancy so I'm not jimmy rigging everything with wire and toothpaste here. Yeah, so this is my playlist. I've got a lot of great stuff, but there's also like like this, euphonical, euphonical alchemy, feel the moment, background, cinematic music, uh, Pandora Journey, two hour epic music, one hour fantasy adventure, what's that, Jacob McNatt. So there are a lot of these channels out there and I use them, like right now I'm gonna write, I gotta do my words and get on my book. So I'm going to put this dramatic music on. Might not go with the scene right now, but I'm going to do it. Okay, this is what I was supposed to do. I was trying to do a screen recording today. I wanted to show you some channels. Um, for those of you, there's some for writing, some for booktube, some for plant-based, okay? I'll go through them quick. Here's Film Courage. This is a great one. If you're into film, um, screenwriting, anything, you'll love it. This is We Cook Vegan. Just short, great videos. Um, I really enjoy Lauren, Live It Like Lauren. It was Lose It Like Lauren. She's a woman in the UK, but she gained, she, it was her weight loss journey, but she gained all her weight back, and so now she's just living it, living it like Lauren. Um, Olivia reads a latte. She's kind of fun. She does book tubing, and, you know, and she kind of takes us on her day and takes us to coffee shops and takes us out and about, so that's fun. Love Kevin Lee Jacobs. Okay, he is classic. He and his partner fixed up an old Victorian, like 1800s Victorian. He always, always beautifying his home and cooking and gardening, and he's just classic. Okay, he just reminds you of someone very Southern and 
charming love locks library now she she and i don't have the same book taste but she loves reading books she does a lot of book hauls and she also sells a lot of books to support her little book haul habit <clears throat> But she is crazy about her library. She's crazy about her books. She buys gorgeous books. She reads fat novels. She annotates like nobody's business. She even adds like music libraries to her annotations. Oh, she makes reading, she makes you want to just read all the time. So when I'm too much online, I start watching her and then I get back to my books. Um, I'll. Alexandra Roslin, she's wonderful too. She used to be a librarian. She's a booktuber. She's very fun. She takes us out and about, you know, like to bookshops and she reads stacks of books. Super positive fun. Plant based cooking. Andrew Bernard, the Nard Dog Cooks. Real simple, quick videos. Cooks great stuff. I, I've cooked some of their stuff. He he and his wife have another channel, something do it without dairy or dare I can't remember because I haven't watched it forever. And then there's the healthy life. This is Mike and Cara. They're all about raw and successful living. There's another music station. Jenna, okay, for the writers, writing with Jenna. She's funny. She gives great advice. She does live writing sprints. I thought they were weird at first, but now I kind of like them. So she does those. Um, oh, love. She is new. The Cozy Creative. She is really quirky. Really fun. Let me see if I put my thing over there. She'll... Real different. Quirky. Interesting. Fascinating. Breath of fresh air. I have a friend who doesn't even write and she loves to watch her. Who else? I think that's it. I'm just going to show you those. Oh, I love Simnet Nutrition. I love this. I'm not really into building muscle. Um, I am into working out and I am doing weight training now because you all said that that was the best way to lose weight. I remember, so I'm doing it. Um, but I love his recipes and his menus. He makes the best food. Oh my goodness. And then this one, we'll end with this. Gail McNeil, um, oh, I put the wrong name on my blog. Okay, it's Gail McNeil. She's also 50's sister. I think maybe that's her TikTok. I don't know. She is so inspiring. She's 56, went through a midlife crisis, gained weight, drinking too much. I mean, it didn't sound like she's drinking that much, but for her it was empty nest, depressed, and she gave herself a year to transform her life. And her and her husband got rid of everything, downsized to backpacks, and moved to Portugal. And she is plant-based, completely changed her life, changed her body. She's super cute and fit. And so, let's see, do I have anyone else that you just have to... Oh, Little Chinese Everywhere. This is a great one. This is a great travel vlog. Love it. Um. And there's lots of raw stuff like raw vegan rising. I've been watching him, but I, I don't, I can't do a hundred percent raw. Oh, the burger dude. Oh my goodness. I love the burger dude. He is plant-based and he teaches you how to make all the fast food, junk food, a little healthier, cheaper, and much, much tastier at home. I even have his cookbook. So... Let's see, who else? Oh, and then I think most of you know, this Reflections of Life used to be uh, Green Renaissance, but they changed. And so these are kind of short, really emotional, lovely videos, kind of depressing sometimes because they're kind of sad and they're about people who have been through a lot, but inspiring too. Just all kinds. I don't know if you can go on my subscriptions, but if you can, you can look and see. I think you can. If you can go on my subscriptions, you can go see who I'm subscribed to. I've got some incredible... Oh, this guy. One more, one more. Wait, maybe two more. Um, Healthy vegan eating. Oh, this guy. He does 
everything is healthy, plant-based, like super healthy, whole plant-based food. I love his channel. I haven't tried any of his food yet, but I will. Uh, Meredith Phillips, she has the funnest, quirkiest little channel. She's so cute. She's a writer. She always does the NaNoWriMo's. Sauce Stash, great stuff. There's PB with J also. Oh, <coughs> for spiritual stuff, Landria Anka, love her. She said the other day, uh, can you turn my timer off? She said the other day that she is not. People tell her how to grow her channel. She's like, I am not, I don't care about the views or the subscribers or the money. I am here to give a message of positivity and hope. And she had Jim Carrey. She talked about Jim Carrey and said some things that he said that I had in my book. I wrote it in The Feast of Life about him. So that was kind of weird. She wrote about him the other day. So see, we're all connected. So I got a lot of like raw people, spiritual stuff. Oh, I am not into the keto thing, but I love the keto twins. I love them. I watch them just because I love them. Um, so if you're into keto, there you go. How to stay focused as a writer. I don't really know his channel. What is it up there? Write with me. Plant-based. We've got a lot of plant-based on there. Uh, EECC Travels. I go on here to look at my look at the cruises. Because they did a whole thing about the icon. Um, so that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Everybody. There's a, there's some new channels. I promise you'll love them. They're inspiring. Interesting. What's this? Oh, the Ullingovs. This one's fun. They do some traveling, go to villages. That one's fun. Aussie man reviews. Aussie man's reviews are hilarious. Hilarious. Um, inappropriate language for those of you who don't, you know, if that bothers you, then don't go on there. But he is Australian and hilarious. Okay, you guys, I gotta get to work. This is my, <clears throat> there's potatoes, beans, and the cheese sauce. Doesn't it look gooey and yummy? It's very plain, but it's so comforting and filling and delicious. I know, I know. Good morning. Coffee's percolating, percolating, percolating. Ooh. Making some lunch for the kids. See, they have their little organic meats and cheeses. And, and Mummy has her coffee with her plant-based creamers. And then I'm going to have some juice, not juice juice, the juicing juice. I'm going to have some vegetables, some green juice, but it's red juice because we put beets in it. And I'm probably going to cut up some pineapple and some melon. Oh, yum. Good morning again. I said I'd give a tour. I am not, I was going to make everything clean and tidy, but you're going to get... The house in its natural state because I just oh my goodness I am so into my writing right now that I keep the house as tidy as I can and every once in a while I'd say like every like once a month I go through and really clean and then once a week I just do the basic like vacuum and sweep mop and tidy up a little dusting that's it because I'm consumed. <laughs> I'm consumed with, you know, I have my writing and then I'm studying this book by Jenna Morsey. And that's my life. But anyway, I want to show you. So I changed, let's start in the kitchen. I'm just going to show you the parts that I changed. Um, the kitchen I changed out because I work here so much that it was just always really crowded and I didn't enjoy it and I couldn't keep it organized. So I rearranged everything, pulled the table out. I really love this setup. I love the colors. I love the setup. 
and um, I just find it a lot easier to work. I actually, I think I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to go through another purging too. I'm going to get rid of some stuff. It's springtime and I got to kind of go through the house. Um, we had some trouble with our roof. They put the solar panels in and there were leaks and it kind of rotted out some of the uh, what ceiling and the ceiling did not have enough support beams. So the solar company replaced the roof and they replaced one of the panels, which is good. And Bali put in some more support beams. So we are going to fix this. And once we fix this and this, I'm going to paint the pantry espresso. And that'll be wonderful. But recently I got in here. It was just a real terrific mess. This is the new bathroom. It is beautiful, beautiful and perfect. And we've got a nice little window in there and it's a lovely bathroom. And then I recently went through here. I've just been kind of going through my house room by room. Long time ago, I think it's called Cuddlebug. Is it called Cuddlebug or Clutterbug? Anyway, there was a channel that did this 12-week love your house or hug your house. And this was years ago. And the, you would go through each room. You'd spend a week on each room or section of your house. And I've kind of been doing that. So this area is always just crazy. So I scrubbed all this and organized it. It is actually organized. I've got all my garden, my laundry. Also, I have switched out. I was using this. I wasn't crazy about it. And I don't know if it's my washing machine or this. It was not working. But I go to the health food store and I get this. I get everything. I try to get as much stuff. <sighs> Once again, we don't do perfect, but we are working towards it every day. I try to get stuff in cardboard or, you know, metal or glass that I can recycle. I ordered these. These are compostable bags. So I have those that I use now. And I have, that's more of this. And I buy all my laundry detergent in boxes and it works great. And I also have all this stuff to make my own laundry detergent, which I may try doing again, but I don't know. I, I never had a lot of luck with it. And these are my cleaning rags and these are bags. Um, these were from like when we would go to the food bank, they'd give us plastic bags. I reuse them over and over, uh, but I bring my own bags to the grocery store now and I'm pretty good about it. But if I have old ones, I reuse them over and over. Um, and then this washer, I've had this washer forever. And sometimes it plays dead. It does. One time it died. And I had my a former realtor call and offer me her old washer and dryer. And I kept the dryer and I stored the washer. It's actually outside in the shed. But then this thing started working again. I was washing all my clothes in the bathtub and I thought that was so fun because it was kind of during a phase where I was reading all these pioneer books and log cabin cookbooks. And I thought, oh, that's so fun. Look at me washing my clothes until I got to like heavy stuff like sheets and man jeans. And then I wasn't having so much fun. And then it started working again. So I don't trust it. But what I have to do with this washer is I have to unplug it and plug it back in every time I wash. So obviously it's a little electric thing going on. So I do have an old washer on reserve stored for when this thing decides to really kaputs. And over here, I got this all organized. So this is my pantry. It's not real big, but there's a lot of stuff here. And these are the Mylar bags from that prepper who's given away all his stuff. Um, it's just rice and beans. And then I just have various, you know, hot sauce. We have tons of hot sauce. And then we have all our to-go containers. You know, when we pack, I pack everything. Everybody gets a packed lunch. Tons of to-go. And then over here is all, you know, I have my dehydrator, which is great. And I just bought some Teflon sheets because I am doing more and more raw. So I'm going to make raw granola. Um, when the plum trees out there start to produce, I'm going to make fruit leathers. I learned that from a friend in Oregon and uh, more canned stuff. And a lot of this canned stuff, 
I just use, you know, I throw most of this, I just throw in soups, you know, and then what do we got? Pinto beans. Yeah, we got pinto beans. We have like one lone thing of chicken, mm, you know, so I just got some odds and ends and, oh, and there's all the tools. Yeah. Pantry slash tool shed, but this is all the painting because I've been painting like crazy. But anyway, it's pretty organized and clean. And then the kitchen, you saw the kitchen. And so this is that. And then this side's not. But yeah, I'm not, I'm a little bit, I know some of you love to give suggestions and I'll take them because I'm not actually thrilled with the table setup. Anyway, what I did is, okay, and then here's the living room and I repainted it. And I had the table over here. I moved the table over here and it did not work at all. It just did not work. So I moved some of my stuff out of the office, put it in here. And here's our lovely new living room. We've got all the twinkle lights and I found those little trees on the street and I use them on the piano and I moved my office rug in here because the orange goes so well with the, hold on. Okay, Adele was, Adele was singing over me. So then I turned my office is like office slash dining room. I'm a little concerned about a carpet in the dining room because, you know, we dribble things. I do have a shampooer, uh, but in a way it works because when I'm in here writing, people come in and snack and we chat and... And we do schoolwork in here and I like it because I can write and then they do schoolwork at the table. So it kind of works, kind of. Not super thrilled with it. So that's about it. Nothing else is different over here. I am gonna paint the hallway, I think, an espresso. I'm not sure. Also, we have bike, oh, we have exercise equipment everywhere. Bali has really bad knees and I got this for Christmas for him. And it, hold on, it's bothering me. It's in my plant. Anyway, he loves this. It's helped him tremendously. And it doesn't take up much space. And it wasn't that expensive. It's a great, great little machine. I don't care for it. Because it hurts my nether regions. And I just, I'm like, I don't know how people bike. I don't find it pleasant. But this is my machine. I love it. And it doesn't take up a lot of space and it wasn't that expensive. It's a little um, noisy, but who cares? Anyway, I love my elliptical. I work out on that all the time. And then we have this, we, we dragged this home for free. And I also painted this room. It is, you know, a crazy blue, but the kids like it. And then this just fits in the corner. And Bali and I work out on it all the time. I love this machine. And one of you told me, you got to work out with the weights to lose weight. And I believe you. And I've been working out a lot and I feel pretty strong. I do. But I do have to take off the weight for my back. Now let's do a little tour. Let me get these on. All these handy things. Okay. So here's my beautiful camellia, but I think we're going to have to trim it a little because every winter the snow and everything makes it sag. So it needs a little bit of pruning. This is our front yard. It's still crazy as ever. I don't know what to do with it. I would like to fill it up with garden beds and just plant tons of flowers because we've got this awkward chunk of tree. And this, I would like to paint the whole house and put maybe some bamboo here and fill this up with garden beds. But you know, one thing and another. But here's the wonderful thing. I started planting, my neighbor kept giving me bulbs. And I tried planting all kinds of things over here. And this yard's kind of weird. It doesn't get a lot of sun. And nothing grew in these sections. And then she started giving me bulbs. And then there was another neighbor who moved and was getting rid of her garden. And I just started sticking bulbs in here. And look at that. It's all lush. And then we have various pots with weird things. 
Look at all these flowers. And we've got King Kong. I've saved all the kids' toys because... And we've got the crepe myrtle. I know they don't look alive, but they are. They've got tiny little blossoms. They're coming back. Everything's coming back. And we bought some blueberries. So this is going to be our little blueberry bed. And there's one blueberry plant in here already that's doing well. And we bought a couple, but they said do not plant them till the fruit's come and gone. And then after the fruit's come and gone, then you can plant them in the ground. So I guess that's what we'll be doing. And then we have this over here is usually a lot more lush because we've got a crepe myrtle that's growing. We have a crepe myrtle growing out of a stump. This broke in the winter time and Bolly stuck in this stump. And I thought, well, that's not going to happen. And guess what? It did. It's growing well. And then this is my flower bed. And I just kind of let it go rogue. And over the winter, I just put a lot of compost and all kinds of stuff. I'm going to throw some more seed in there. This just kind of winds up being this wild flower patch. And this is my maple tree. And a woman named Shirley gave me a card to a nursery once a million years ago. And I bought this maple tree and it's just getting so big and beautiful. So this will help. And I've got a lot. I planted a lot of, um, well, let's see. There's a kiwi tree over there. And I planted rows of Sharon. And I think I have another camellia tree. Another rose of Sharon. These are roses, that, all long hair roses that we got. Um, our neighbor planted a beautiful yard. It's a little, everything's looking overgrown right now. We've had more rain than we have ever had before. Thank you, Mother Nature. But he planted a very native garden, native plants and trees. And he's a master gardener and he just does an amazing job. So he had all these old roses he wanted to have dug up and we brought them over here and we planted them all along here. This is my little kitchen garden. And as you see, it's gotten a little crazy too. I did dig it up and I put all kinds of compost and fertilizer and I planted, this is all mustard greens. Oh, mustard greens, but I'm going to have to get in there and work it. And I had planted lettuce and carrots over here, but I don't see anything. And there's a broccoli that's been here forever. So this needs some work. And we got our little bird feeder or our little bird bath. We got that from Prepper Princess. Look at all these beautiful flowers. So we are just coming out of an intense winter. We did not get a ton of snow, but we did get, oh, so much rain. And there's my wonderful clothesline and our patio waiting, waiting. We'll put a shade cloth up there pretty soon. We put bamboo and shade cloth up there and decorate it. And we sit out here and we barbecue. There's my little barbecue pit. We barbecue and... I re oh I cannot wait. I am so I can smell barbecue and chlorine now. I cannot wait. And we sit out here and we swim and we barbecue and I read books. I sit in my bathing suit and read books all day. Oh I can't wait. And then this, these are my old tomatoes. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this stuff. I don't know. I don't have the gardening. So I've been planting stuff, but it's just we got to kind of wait. Bali was working in the garden yesterday. Okay, so since the dogs passed, we took most of the fencing down. I kept this up because it's so charming. These pieces are from that tree when we were trimming it because it was really crazy over here. And that gate is from our old house. It's from our old, old house, so I don't want to get rid of that. And I don't know, we left a part of the fence. But we've got a garden filled with, we've got fruit trees, all kinds of stuff. We're going to move the pool. 
we are going to move the pool because we never get any sun over there. You know, once this tree starts leafing out, we don't get any sun. And so we don't go, we don't swim till like three o'clock. So we're going to move the pool. And that's a little solar thing to heat up the water, which it actually works. Um, look at all the little dinosaurs. Like I said, I've kept all the kids. I was donating everything and then I realized, you know what? They're getting to the end of their toy days. So I started keeping the Godzillas and the dinosaurs. And, and here's a beautiful tree. Look at that. Oh, I'm so happy. The frost, we had snow and frost and it did not kill everything. Anyway, I have planted, you can see it. I've planted all kinds of beets along here. And then this is all craziness. And then along each post, we have grapevines and kiwis and my rosemary. And then all these trees are almonds, chestnut. Let's see if my chestnut's okay. Are you okay? Yes, you are okay. Good. Um, cherries. Cherries, cherries, cherries. These trees got really strong. This one almost died. But I recovered it. We have a beautiful, I think this is a peach tree. A beautiful peach tree. Look at those blossoms. I think it did okay. I hope the frost didn't. A greenhouse we don't use. Our mandarin tree, which never grows. So I guess we bought ourselves a dwarf. Because it never grows. It has not grown past this. Another tree. Now, all along here, I planted... Oh, look, look, the rows are coming up. I can't remember what I planted, to be honest. I planted radishes, beets over there, radishes over here, all kinds of greens, and they're coming up, they're coming up, they're coming up. Yay! I planted these over the winter. I think I planted some stuff over here, and I see a little bit of it coming up. And then I planted a an asparagus patch. But the asparagus, I bought the asparagus starts at Grocery Outlet. And I can tell you, I am a firm believer of only buying plants, seeds, and trees from reputable garden nurseries. Because every time I've bought them from like Home Depot or Lowe's or a grocery store, it does not work out. It does for some people, so don't, you know, don't cancel it out. But for me, it doesn't. Anyway, I was going to make this into a an asparagus patch, and I am still going to do an asparagus patch, but you have to really weed it out and make it super rich. And, <clears throat> and then plant it. You can only plant them in January. So I'm going to have to wait till next year. And here is... Oh, no. I hope this one's okay. Okay, I think it's okay. I think there's a little blossom. This is my other chestnut tree. These usually do really well. Here's my apple trees. And they're kind of slow to bloom. Apples, apples. How are you doing, little apples? I think they're doing okay. They're just slow to bloom. And there's another cherry. Is that a cherry? I don't know. And then nectarine. Here's a fig. This fig tree's been here forever. And then a nec this nectarine's doing great. Look at that. Bravo, nectarine. And then we moved. We had some trees over there, but they weren't getting enough sun. So we had this poor almond was suffering. And so skinny. It, we planted it the same time as its brother over there and it just stayed so small and skinny so we moved it over here and it was so happy it started blossoming immediately the minute there was a warm day it blossomed and then we have our pomegranate tree I'm just looking to see if there's and there are some buds starting so we used to have them over here and they didn't get much sun at all especially when this tree is fully leafed out so we moved them, and they're happy. And we have another pomegranate here. I don't know what's going on over here. Is this a poppy? 
Oh, and there's another pomegranate. So we got three pomegranates. And then there's grapes, grapes, grapes. And then this side, and then we have, we made a proper compost bin because that keeps Molly out. That's why she's slimming down. And we have another compost over there. And then all this I planted winter greens. So all of this is a mixture of greens and grass. <sighs> so we definitely have to, as the days warm up, we're going to get out here before the soil is dry. We're going to get out here and weed, 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 and compost the weeds and start planting all kinds. I really want to plant this garden up like crazy. We got to move the pool and plant up this garden just an insane amount. I want, I just want tons of produce, especially because I'm eating mostly raw. I need a lot of fresh produce. But that is how it's looking. And there's our little shed, which I don't know. It's, it's, we don't have a garage or anything, so we kind of have to store things there. And we got to clean this out a little bit. But there you have it. So this is, I am getting a new phone today. And we will see. I know I got one before, but it was really a cheap one I got offline. This is supposed to be an amazing phone. And I'm a little bit nervous about it because it means I have to educate myself on technology and like I said I will educate myself on writing till the cows come home and I'm happy as a clam but I'm a little bit uh, uncomfortable with technology but I feel like it's really important that I have some good lighting and that when you watch my videos that they're really pleasing to the eye as far as rich colors and lighting i'm not going to get fancy like everybody else. this is just a life vlog so this is kind of how it's going to be and it'll be a little bit of this a little bit of that but i want it to be visually enjoyable and i need to it's all about this year is all about improvement and upping your game a little bit. You know, the kids in their game and they call it leveling up. So that's what I feel like doing. I'm just leveling up. I keep leveling up to the next level. And we will see.